So I'll do an introduction behind, behind what we do. I'm from 100TB. We're a gold sponsor here at the show. We're an infrastructure provider. You just got told a lot about the experience and the quality of content. We really come from this, from the network side. We're not a huge CDN that gave you keynotes this morning. We do something a little bit different. Um, and what I wanted to talk to you about a little bit is what Sodexis, Gartner, and as a hosting provider, what that really means, what they're trying to talk about when they say multi-CDN, hybrid cloud, hybrid delivery. What they're really trying to talk about is other options to CDN. I took a great quote, which I'm going to start um, this presentation with, is a lot of people tout multi-CDN, and Sodexis have actually got, and you can see it in the brochure and on their actually the, the advertisement outside and in the brochure, is they've now gone from a very interesting word, by the way, to use the word chunk to describe all of the CDN providers. Um, but they've now said two CDNs are better than one, and they now also added to that the word cloud. They don't just stay consistent with CDNs, because, because I think of this quote, and this was a recent quote I took. Uh, it's a little bit further on. Uh, I thought about delivering content, and it doesn't matter how many third-party CDNs you have or how many CDN providers you have. They are still, they are still the, the black box governed by confidential network routes and slight caching errors. Um, it doesn't matter how many of them you have, and they all seek to solve that problem. But generally, um, what, what we like to think about in our business is how do we solve the problems that the CDNs themselves do not solve? They seek to solve a lot of problems for content providers, but not all the problems, as Gartner and, Gartner and um, Sodexis and others can be like to explain. Um, it's kind of a blame game in the, in the CDN world, and that's why multi-CDN kind of exists. So who the heck is 100TB? So without reading all of this, I didn't make too, too many slides. A lot of them have a lot of content on. We founded the 100TB idea in 2010. Previously, we were 10TB.com. And one thing in 2010 I realized is, I'm with Lance Crosby actually in a, in a hotel in Miami. Lance was the guy who founded SoftLayer. We've seen these CDNs. I, I tried to engage CDNs for a long time. And to give you an idea, we've had contracts with Akamai, Level 3. We're a very high bandwidth host and have been for a long time. And the cost to deliver bandwidth relative to the cost to build it was really, really large. So we decided to make a bare metal host that was giving 100 terabytes of bandwidth, which if any of you hold a CDN contract that's 10 terabytes, 100 terabytes, 500 terabytes, a petabyte, 10 petabytes, 100 petabytes per month, you'll know how expensive on a per terabyte basis some CDNs can be. Um, and not necessarily with too much just behind it. Um, so we, we decided in 2010 on SoftLayers Network with Lance to build um, a very, very large high bandwidth infrastructure, um, which in, in, in today's world is called cloud. I describe cloud as something a little different, which you'll see a little bit later on. But in 2011, we got back, we had large growth in the high bandwidth space. We got backed by private equity to accelerate the growth. It's expensive to provide bandwidth, but we are on such a good path. Um, who do we service? Some of the largest managed streaming platforms use us as the underlying infrastructure. Um, one notably got bought by a very large CDN last year, this time last year. Still use us. Um, Accelerator programs, tech stars, Y Combinator, whatever it may be, portfolio startups in the streaming space that need a recovery requirement for a lot of bandwidth. If you go to AWS and ask for more than 10 terabytes of bandwidth, you don't want to read the bill. If you go to any of the large CDNs, there's a large barrier to entry for the bill. Um, so we look after a lot of people who are entering the space. We're not necessarily looking after the Netflixes of the world. That's not us. It never will be us. Um, we're looking, we also take people, and I'll give you an example as I go along. In the UK, for example, there is a large gambling culture in, in Europe too, and betting sites provide video and the betting site at the same time. You cannot have latency problems. And if I, I found it actually pretty funny uh, earlier when one of the keynotes, don't remember who, said latency doesn't really matter as much anymore. That's true in some instances, but not for all. That example I just gave you, if there was a latency discrepancy, they would lose a lot of money. Um, we service small and large CDNs, like I mentioned. I don't want to join any Wi-Fi. Uh, um, 
we service both small and large CDNs. Notably, we don't just spend a lot of our time in the streaming space. We have to have a tendency to care a lot about network performance for our other verticals. We spend a lot of time in the gaming space. We provide a lot of infrastructure for major studios in the gaming sector. Notably, two very large games over the last six months have used us. Um, what do we sell? Cloud and bare metal infrastructure. And I, I do say streaming being one, we're clearly at a high bandwidth host. We find it very interesting, a very interesting market. OTT providers are very interesting people doing very interesting things. And we like to make sure what they're getting, the kind of the rock underneath, is very strong. And how much traffic do we do? I mean, a lot of people won't tell you this information, but we're a pretty open bunch of guys. We are a startup, well, or with a startup feel by, by private equity. It's how much traffic we do today. Basically, all of that has come from 2010 onwards. Um, with a large amount of capacity. So thoughts on scaling with performance. I found the top one actually very interesting when a, one of the keynotes earlier also said, BGP optimization was, was something almost of the past. Well, it's kind of like that uncle you know, and you don't really think about him for a while, and he does something stupid. That's kind of how BGP works. Um, and BGP can cause a lot of network um, problems. By the way BGP is built, it will always be that way. Um, it's a great protocol, I have to say, but there's lots of optimization you can do. And we spend a lot of time every day optimizing routes with a proprietary set of technology. I do list how many we change per day, and that is all for viewer experience. And we use all the major transit providers, level three, Zao, AboveNet, Telia, blah, 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 all the major internet exchanges. Um, and one thing I always ask about, when, you, when you're procuring a set of service providers, whether that be CDNs, whether that be hosting providers, clouds, whatever it may be, however you procure, please do a little bit of diligence. And there's plenty of people in this room, Conviva, Sedexis, that will t do a lot of diligence for you on the network level experience. Uh, because all networks are not created equally. And I'm not here to say 100 TB, we will make networks great again. That's not what I'm here to do. I am to tell you a little bit about how we, some of the, how we build lot large networks with incredible performance at scale. Um, and there's, I, I mentioned some products you can look up there. Um, and one of the most important things we will ever do as a hosting provider, and if you ever get this out of a CDN, please provide it to me. We are a true provider of showing people all the routes you take out of your equipment to the internet, to your users, um, and we help you if that isn't the right way for you, we will change it. Now, that's one thing CDNs will not do, is they will not change routing towards the internet for you. Um, and I, I did add, that last bullet point I added actually after a keynote this morning, the big guys take this for granted and say latency doesn't matter that much. There's lots of other metrics they have to measure nowadays, first byte, blah, 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 blah. Um, but the latency you cannot take for granted, um, especially in the example I gave you earlier, where a gambling betting site, where their core application and their video application have to run concurrently, and latency for the video cannot be off compared to the application itself. Um, so I'm gonna move on a little from the root optimization. A lot of non-techies don't care about that stuff. And I'm gonna talk a little about location and, and an idea. So I founded 100TB with a guy called Ditlev who now owns OnApp, which is a virtualization platform. And together with our infrastructure, we've actually made a different type of CDN called CDN.net. Um, we are all the infrastructure provide it. Ditlev runs it, and basically what it does is you are guaranteeing an experience. So the way they bill you, I'm not sure if you've ever, anyone's procured CDN, you'll generally go to them and go, I have this much traffic, and they'll go, what's your ratio balance between US, Asia, the rest of the world, where, wherever. And they will give you a price per region generally, burst rates, storage rates. It's like reading a cell phone bill. It's horrible, um, getting a CDN bill. It feels just off. And one thing we, decided was, with this core infrastructure and this great infrastructure, the way CDN.net actually packages and bills people, it has three types of CDN. I'm not, like I said, this is not my company. I'm not trying to sell you on this. I'm trying to tell you a different way of doing CDN. Is They have three packages. One is they will guarantee you uh, 50 milliseconds within the southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere, and 50 milliseconds to every device, cell phone, anything around the world. And they're all different prices. You are guaranteeing an experience with TCP. That's the way they do it. Um, and that, to be honest, I truly think with the way we're going in our direction, and I will show you a little bit later the map, um, you should be able to procure and guarantee your users an experience and your CDN 
should take that into their building, because typically they'll just give you a huge SLA. The SLA will probably be as big as that pen, and the legal documentation will probably be as thick as this, and you'll never be able to get a good SLA out of them. Um, well, that, that's probably incorrect. You'll get a decent SLA, but it'll take a long, way to, a long time and a lot of lawyers to figure it out. So the idea we thought of is with all this core infrastructure around the world, why not go ahead and just build based on it? Per gigabyte per millisecond is essentially the technical term, but it's selling you a package. Um, there's a few other things, and like I said, I'm gonna mention other people's services in here. I'm not here to sell you on 100 TB. If you, get, if you guys need some sort of cloud bare metal in your infrastructure, people like Sedexis, compare it with a CDN environment or a multi-CDN environment, and you can kind of use everybody for what they're best for. Level three are good for a lot of things. We're good for a lot of things. Not everybody is perfect for everything. Use the right thing for your users. Um, but think about if Peer5, Peer5, I'm not sure if they did their talk or not yet. They're a different type of P2P style of delivering content. It's a little bit different. But have a think about all the delivery methods that you seek to provide. No one CDN is good, right, based on the quote I provided earlier, for giving you what you need and your content needs. Um, your TV service. So one thing we fought for very hard, and one thing actually that really, it kind of annoys me about CDNs, but it's kind of the way of the world, is in Brazil, with every server we provision, and you can provision anything on our servers, we don't stick you with it, you know, you can provision Wowzer, you can provision any of the Nginx, anything on our servers. We fought for a long time, and we were the first people to get under, essentially, $10 a terabyte in Brazil provisioning with us. That is basically unheard of in the CDM world. I mean, $10 per terabyte is pretty unheard of in the CDM world, but under $10 a terabyte in Brazil is something we fought for. We had a major gaming client, a major streaming client, we ha they wanted to try out Brazil. They had consumers in Brazil. People in Brazil were having issues with viewing content. And just because of cost, nothing really else. They were not able to provide the Brazilian clients. They had to service out of Miami, to a typical place, or Dallas is a typical place where you traditionally, based on how peering works, service those people from. And we were, we've always tried to break the boundaries of delivering high amounts of bandwidth and cost so you don't and that's typically why startups like us, by the way, is startups don't want to go to these huge CDNs, engage in a, even if it's a very small commit contract through to a very large one over three years, it's not really how their business model works. Um, origin servers, the Sedex has actually did a very interesting piece on how you can actually deliver more out of your origin servers than just shipping your content off to the CDN itself. It was actually a very good piece. I'm not really gonna go into detail on it because I don't have a whole lot of time. Um, but there's an interesting piece about how you can use more with your origin servers, and obviously the typical recommendation is keep your origin servers as far away from the CDNs as you can. Um, and one of the last point is, as we go into this virtual world, this virtual reality world, which is a very fun world, and if any of you have played around with virtual reality, you know, Steam showed a bunch of us last year in August, and it's a truly amazing world. Now the thing about virtual reality is, it's kind of based on latency pretty much, and delivery, and getting it. And with these large CDNs saying we're moving, you know, latency isn't as much as an issue before, virtual reality is a very interesting one for latency and performance of your network. And clearly that means you have to be closer to all your users. I, you know, it may seem like I'm trying to preach the obvious, but a lot of these very large companies kind of do, kind of, they, they approach it in a different way than a hosting provider would, if you want me to put it that way. So those are just a few thoughts on the technology behind these, you know, with the rock at the bottom um, that provides, and everything goes above us, so whether it's CDN, CDN's users as a hosting provider, whether you guys want to use us as a hosting provider, Conviva goes on top of that, Sedexis goes on top of that, whatever third party you sort of, sort of wish to go for, but all I'm trying to get at here is, as a hosting provider, this is the sort of stuff we care about and how we scale, and we'll, we'll be in 40 locations by the end of this year, all of them inclusive around the world, and we are trying to drive down the cost of high quality bandwidth. And, and you, may think, you may look at me and go, well, you did $10 per terabyte in Brazil. That must just be garbage, single home redundancy. If it makes you aware, we use SoftLayer as the provider. It's an IBM company. It's not garbage. Um, so beyond that, so I, I came on, everybody has a different version of the cloud. Um, it kind of, kind of feels like where the CDN's market going. Cloud was just, to be honest, was just a term to describe consumptive billing. The technology behind cloud was made a long time ago. Hypervisors, storage, every, you know, everyone's just getting better at it. 
that cloud is just a, a word of describing billing used based on consumption. Am I, oh, we're good. Um, the next question I ask is, in any region, are you paying over $5 a terabyte to serve your content? Uh, in Europe, US, the cost of delivering content is actually very, very, very low in the commoditized markets. And I think what Sodexis and some others are trying to get at is, with your multi-CDN and multi-cloud strategy, is they, the, the quote I actually took was a very, well, a decent sized UK distributor of video. Um, all they did, they didn't even use a CDN. They just bought 10 inexpensive clouds. They were young. They don't have stupid amounts of money. And they just built a platform with Sodexis Radar. Um, and what I'm saying is, use CDNs for what they're really good for. CDNs are really good for some things. They are extremely good for some things, actually. Some of their pairing agreements, some of the way they deliver. If they fit your niche on HTTP delivery, they are very good for some things. But there's other people that can help you not just save cost, but help. Ex uh, we don't really go down the whole cost path. We go down the whole experience path. Um, in Europe and US, that is not an un uncommon number. And the latest post I have seen, and clearly Dan is going to talk about it a little bit later on, um, about CDN pricing and where the market's going and IP transit. This Wi-Fi really likes me, huh? Um, you, you might be overpaying, and there is other options to look for. And I'm not saying that's us. Go look at AWS, go look at Azure, look at anybody that can service your needs in the regions you care about to the customers you care about. There is other options with companies like Sodexis where you can throw everything into one and pick your pieces, and ultimately the experience will be better. Just a few things in the hosting space to keep an eye on. Stackpath, a lot of people here haven't mentioned security. There's a lot of security to be thought about in all of these solutions. Uh, founded by Lance Cosby, the guy who founded SoftLayer, he's trying to do a lot with big, big data, bringing it into the real world of security. And DLVR.com, this one's perhaps a little bit more interesting. It's about delivering content. Um, a lot to do with mobile devices. Mike Gordon is ex-Limelight, he's based in Phoenix. I've met him a few times. He's very, it's basically another third party of helping you deliver content and the experience. And one thing I've always said, there's, there's two things that most of you won't care about in here, but when you're building a network at scale, kind of the key, the key title behind all of this is answer yourself these three questions or these three issues. Does it make operational sense? Does it make common sense? This is the one that people forget the most. And does it make financial sense? Common sense in infrastructure decisions are often forgotten. Um, and, and what I mean by that is people look at ask their support teams, their operation teams, does this make sense? And then they'll run to the CFO. They won't look at themselves in the mirror and go, is this the right thing for what we should be doing for our customers? That's what common sense is really trying to apply at. And streaming expertise, I actually use this for um, a presentation I did to a um, conference in Seattle, but this one doesn't really apply to you guys, is who is on your team to help your clients with your streaming experience or expertise? But all of you guys in this, this room, I can guarantee, most of you have more expertise in streaming than I do. So. I could probably ask you that question. Um, and just a, this is a quick plug for us, um, not very much, just our data center map where we can provision large amounts of infrastructure for not very much money compared to CDNs or other cloud-based people, and this is what we're kind of building. And I think I've hit my time. So um, any questions? I know I ran through that rather fast. Um, I'm sure I just sound like another, as we call ourselves, hosting knuckleheads. Um, don't want to sound like one of those. Um, but if you ever need to reach me, I'm here. And to be honest, I will happily give you impartial advice, whether you're trying to procure IP transit, co-location, whatever you're trying to procure in the infrastructure space. I've helped a lot of people, some people internally, and Tim will laugh, um, who works for us. I get called the charity internally, because I do a lot of things for free for a lot of people. Um, but I will, if you ever need procurement help in the infrastructure space or the CDN space, I've been there, done that. I've learned some lessons that were ugly. Um, monetary and headache wise. So there's my details if you so wish to keep them. Thanks for listening and I hope you have a great conference and I hope to see you over the next two days. <laughs>